Good morning to everyone and greetings from the beautiful city of Tallinn. I'm your host, Annette Numa, and today we're kicking off the Oslo Innovation Week event, which is called Distance Learning in Estonia, Heralding the Future of Education. Since the beginning of the COVID crisis, it became very clear that digital solutions were not just something nice to have that we had here, but the only way to manage the changing world around us. We have realized here in Estonia and we have always believed that the fastest road to success is through the educational system. So we, uh, this year, almost overnight, many families had to switch over to remote learning and working all across the world, both in Oslo and I guess also here in Estonia. So the digital revolution in Estonia aims that implementation of modern digital technology has to be more efficient and effective, both in learning, teaching, research, to improve digital skills of the entire nation. It includes ensuring that every student should have necessary knowledge, skills and access to our infrastructure for the future. Estonian success in digital revolution can be seen in the educational landscape since twice as many students in continue their IT careers in Estonia than the average in other OECD countries. So today we are going to hear three very exciting presentations about the Estonian success story in e-education and of course also for the future plans. So we have also two edtech companies here joining us today who are going to cover how private sector can actually reshape the landscape of educational policy. Today, we have already 40 edtech startups here in Estonia. Just in the past two years, we have had 20 new edtech companies, which is a very, very huge number. So the cooperation between the public and private sector is the basis of Estonian success story in educational policy. We share our best practices during the crisis and how these challenges reflected on what we see as the future of the education. So the schedule for the day now is the following. We're going to start with Ivar Hio. He is the project manager at Innovation and Cooperation Center of the Education and Youth Authority. And secondly, we have Daniel Geres, who is the CEO of EGOL, which is the main uh, school managing platform that we use. And last but not least, we have Kadri Duisk, who is the founder and CEO of Clanbit. So I guess we're going to have a very great time here today. I would kindly, of course, also encourage all of you to ask questions from our wonderful experts to make our discussion even more fun. You can also ask the questions through the Slido. So the number is eight, one, six and five. So please use your opportunity to communicate with our experts today. I'm going to be asking these questions later on from our experts. So without wasting any more time, it is my great honor to invite our first speaker to the stage. So please, Ivar, the stage is yours. Thank you for the great introduction. Uh, my name is Ivar Hio. I work at the Education and Youth Authority here in Estonia. And uh, today I'd like to make a quite a quick paced uh, introduction on how we went through uh, the crisis uh, here, the emergency situation here in Estonia uh, with regards to education and how we see that linking up with um, as what we see uh, the future of education here in Estonia and hopefully uh, elsewhere in the world as well. So let's, let's start. Uh, first of all, I'd like to make a few comparisons here with uh, Estonia and Norway uh, regarding uh, the education systems. Uh, and uh, I had the pleasure of visiting Norway in 2017, learned a lot uh, visiting your Ministry of Education and uh, the great city up north, uh, the town up north, uh, Boda. Uh, so um, a few comparisons here. So we are, uh, I know that a lot of Norwegians say that they're a small country of only 5 million. Uh, Estonia is a lot smaller than that. Uh, we only have a population of 1.3 million people uh, and uh, a teacher population of 25,000. Uh, 
220,000 pupils. I didn't uh, actually find uh, reliable information on uh, the exact size of the Norwegian teacher and uh, student populations, but I, gu I guess you can quadruple uh, the Estonian uh, teacher and pupil uh, population here. Uh, some distinctions, though, uh, with um, Est Estonia and Nor Norway having quite similar education systems, uh, the uh, uh, there are some very uh, distinct uh, uh, differences. So we have a lot smaller schools uh, and a smaller teacher-student uh, population. We uh, have very autonomous schools and very autonomous teachers. Uh, they, w the government doesn't even uh, say how much additional training, uh, continuous training they have to do. Um, it is. Uh, totally dependent on the motivations and, uh, and goals of the teachers and the schools. And now we also have uh, something that we uh, did not know until recently actually that were quite original. Uh, Estonian schools have a lot of educational technologists. Over half the uh, schools in Estonia have an educational technologist and uh, they are sort of the middlemen between technology and pedagogy, so uh, they bring uh, the teachers together with the technology that they need, and they make uh, a lot of the decisions in the schools. Um, this is uh, a very wide uh, point that I want to make. Um, in Estonia, a lot of people consider us uh, the digital nation. Uh, so uh, embracing uh, any digital solutions to solve current problems is very much in our blood, so to speak. Uh, and uh, another distinction is Norway has a lot of um, devices in schools, a lot of one-on-one -on -one device use. So each student gets a device from the school or from the municipality. We don't have that. We haven't seen that as necessary. And I'll get uh, to that point later on as well. Uh, we have a higher age of uh, teachers. Uh, over 50% of the teachers in Estonia are over 50 years old. Uh, that has not been uh, a problem for us, actually. And uh, school funding uh, is highly dependent on the wealth of the municipality. This is a problem that we have to still tackle on how to get municipalities in the rural areas that are uh, getting less and less people, how to make sure that the quality of uh, education stays uh, uh, very high. Now, uh, during the crisis, it became very clear that uh, we had differences in uh, digital maturity in uh, schools. Uh, we have advanced uh, from 1997, when uh, we started investing in our school infrastructures, uh, to uh, connect all the schools uh, to the internet and uh, make a lot of uh, different investments in training. Uh, we've had 20 years of continuous training uh, for digital competences for teachers. And uh, some of the core services that these teachers use are actually provided by uh, private companies. Uh, uh, and one of these companies, a uh, long-standing company, will speak uh, right after me. Uh, we have a very strong network of educational technologists in schools uh, that we use uh, uh, to benefit all schools, not, the, not just the ones that uh, uh, they work at. And uh, just to give you an idea of how we look at uh, digital maturity in schools, here's a graph uh, of the uh, different areas that we make comparisons. Um, so. Uh, the green area is uh, the change in the approach to learning, so how well are students and teachers uh, actually engaged with the technology. Uh, we want the school management uh, that is marked in blue uh, to also be a very crucial part, and the digital, digital infrastructure must be there so that they can take advantage of these uh, new tools. So if any of these three legs uh, falls, uh, the system doesn't work. Uh, the, uh, there's no use uh, for the entire system. And uh, now I'd like to get to how we approached COVID uh, during the special or uh, national emergency time here in Estonia and um, uh, what is the link to the national goals that we have. Uh, because we saw, um, we tried to see it 
from the get-go uh, the emergency situation as an opportunity that we can take advantage of. So the national goals, I'm just going to outline them very quickly here. Uh, for 2035, uh, th this is the new strategy timeline. For 2035, we really want to move towards a learner-centered, autonomy-driven uh, education, so that the student is really at the core of, uh, of uh, uh, education and all the goals, uh, so that they are in charge of their uh, learning. Uh, here, uh, very importantly, assessment and good student-teacher uh, uh, relationships play a part. Uh, we uh, are focusing on uh, teachers as supervisors, not just as teachers. And uh, they need to uh, guide students and not just uh, be the um, orators, so to speak. Uh, and um, I'm going to get to this uh, later on um, in more detail, but uh, we really want the teachers' work to become data informed. We want to put data in teachers' hands so that they can make good decisions, not just regards to um, certain subject area materials, but also the state of mind of the students, uh, what they need on a so social level, on an emo emotional level. And uh, as I said, I'll get to this later on in more detail. And uh, we want the teachers' reporting burden to be uh, lessened, uh, because technology as we see it needs to free up time for the teacher, not actually add uh, time to already uh, a very tense schedule for the teachers. And uh, the conclusion from all of these uh, national goals uh, is that they all became very important during school, school closures. Uh, so distance learning time, that was, uh, we saw that the national goals that we had picked prior to COVID-19 uh, became very essential uh, to making sure that students uh, actually take charge of their learning. So the core point here is uh, the national strategy sees as growing students' ownership, sense of responsibility in, le in the learning process, and their motivation as key uh, areas that we need to focus on. But getting to the emergency situation, which was declared uh, on, uh, I think, a, a Friday. Uh, and then from Monday, uh, we were supposed to uh, help all the schools in Estonia to transfer to distance learning. So we had only a few days to prepare. And uh, the first thing uh, that we did was to flatten decision-making processes. So project managers, uh, department heads got a lot more authority to make decisions. That was very important because that allowed the next things to happen. So uh, we put together on day one uh, of the emergency situation an all-in-one information site that uh, teachers, uh, school management could uh, go to and find all of the materials that they needed to make uh, a response uh, in their work. Uh, we started pop-up training programs, and I was actually in charge of one of these. Uh, so uh, Teams, uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, Google Classroom, all, of this, all the different platforms that the schools were already using, but they needed to expand the usage of, we tried to provide training for these. Um, we actually uh, started the training before we had actually finished the materials, so we were putting together the trainings from day two and running them from day two, uh, as we went along with the training with the participants. So uh, we tried to be as quick on our feet as we possibly could. And uh, on day three, on a Sunday, just before the emergency situation was to uh, affect the schools the most, so all schools from Monday were closed, uh, we had a parent online conference. The production was put together in, uh, in two days, and it was a great, uh, greatly received uh, uh, piece, of, uh, piece of information, I would say, because it prepared the students and prepared the parents to actually uh, make uh, decisions on how they should organize their life. Just one uh, key aspect of that would be uh, to put together a schedule for their day. Seems like a very sim simple thing, but affected a lot of people. 
And uh, from Monday, this was true for uh, private platforms as well as uh, government-run platforms. We opened them for free, so no uh, charge uh, during the emergency situation. And that uh, increased uh, the usage by several fold. So, uh, just to make some uh, comparisons here again uh, with the distance learning experience. Um, so, uh, here you can see uh, a uh, piece of research that was done by Telia Cor Corporation uh, across the uh, Nordic Baltic uh, region, uh, comparing the differences, uh, uh, different learning experiences in different countries. So uh, just to get to uh, the point with, uh, with regards to the device use, uh, as you can see from the graph here, uh, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania had a lot less uh, devices provided by uh, the school, uh, but access to the computer was actually very, um, pretty much uniform, uh, with Estonia actually being having the most access. That's probably because uh, close to 100% of, uh, of uh, families have some type of uh, uh, computer for the student at home. So we haven't seen the necessity for one-on-one -on -one device use because of that. Uh, here you can see uh, the top uh, three learning methods uh, that, was that were used in the different countries. Uh, you could just uh, make a few comparisons here. And these are the top three. So uh, in Estonia, you can see on the bottom there, uh, social media environments played a big role. Uh, tutoring videos, this is probably one-on-one uh, -on -one contact uh, with the teacher uh, uh, via uh, different uh, video uh, conferencing tools. Uh, and um, well, uh, there's uh, di slight differences here, uh, but uh, all the countries used many different environments and uh, that actually became a problem. And I'll get back to that. Uh, the overall satisfaction levels, uh, Norway and Estonia are uh, pretty much uh, on an equal footing here. And uh, it was a big surprise for us. Uh, and it was a big surprise for most uh, ministries of education uh, across the region here that uh, most were positive. Uh, the green uh, highlights the positive responses from the students and uh, the the red ones, uh, the negative responses. So what did we learn uh, with the uh, emergency situation? Uh, teachers and schools uh, that had pri prioritized students' independence during um, prior years, I would say, managed best. The, uh, um, the very control-minded schools uh, had it the worst, and the, the most controlled my control minded teachers uh, struggled the most because uh, their, uh, uh, their work relied on control rather than motivation. And this is what we again see as being a very core part of uh, our future strategies as well. Um, we saw it very important that a school have someone to rely on uh, technology-wise. So educational technologists became very crucial uh, during this time. And uh, even though some teachers uh, might have lagged behind uh, in previous years, uh, we saw that the digital competences of uh, particularly these teachers that struggled uh, just rose exponentially. Uh, and so did uh, the ones that, that had used almost any platform that they could ha uh, get their hands on because it was so highly uh, dependent on uh, using online tools the whole period. And uh, the, the uh, main problem that we saw uh, that, had, that affected students' uh, uh, well-being and uh, satisfaction levels was actually um, whether or not a school had made a decision on, um, on which environments they used. Were these made centrally in a school? If every teacher used a different environment for a different task, uh, it confused the students and it made, uh, made for a confusing period uh, for all the pupils. So it's very important to have uh, 
a school that makes these decisions centrally and really sells it to the teachers that these are the ones that we really need to use. Uh, yeah, get, getting the teachers on board is very important. Uh, so it's communication between the teachers and the parents. Uh, being locked away uh, behind uh, four walls uh, at home uh, is not really uh, how we're meant to live. Uh, so communication uh, with others uh, became very important. Uh, another thing that became really uh, uh, apparent to us was how much we re relied on private solutions and how well these private solutions actually managed during uh, this crisis. Uh, the um, uh, the core product, I would say, the core products in Estonia are these digital learning uh, diaries platforms, and we have covered uh, something to close to 100% of students in Estonia, and um, and all of these private uh, companies really got uh, a lot of traffic during this period, and uh, we're very grateful for them, for that. So. Um, this takes me to what we see as uh, the future of uh, educational technology and education in general. Uh, from this year, uh, we have started a procurement process that will take uh, uh, probably uh, at least a decade uh, to build. Uh, it's uh, focusing on creating a personalized learning path uh, for every student in Estonia. It's an ambitious goal. Uh, but uh, we have started creating that infrastructure to link uh, all of these different platforms together uh, to uh, make uh, sure that the teacher uh, in the future has the best information at their hands from the different platforms that students use. So that we can make a coordinated effort on keeping the students motivated and uh, getting the best information in teachers' hands on how to do that, how to get involved, wh when to get involved. Um, because during, f with technology and education, uh, this is the feeling I get uh, when, t when talking ab uh, about technology with my colleagues. Uh, whatever country uh, they are from, a lot of them say uh, it feels like how, however fast we run, uh, we, we simply cannot catch up. So this is from Lewis Carroll, Alice in Wonderland. My dear, here we must run as fast as we can just to stay in place. And if you wish to, to go anywhere, you must run twice as fast as that. So the national responses during these crises, um, we see a need for decentralization, for keeping, uh, for having different platforms, different companies play a highly valuable role in, uh, in, uh, in conducting the learning experience for the students. And how do we do that? So uh, we're creating uh, an educational system for the information age as we see it. Uh, this is how actually a lot of the public services, 99% um, of public services uh, in Estonia are online, from, from uh, ordering yourself a driver's license to, to everything in between, uh, only a few services, uh, uh, buying a house, selling a house, uh, getting married or divorced, you have to do face to face. The rest of the services uh, are online, and we, we see it uh, as the future of education as well. So uh, gathering data from different uh, uh, platforms, different environments, uh, to make sure that the teachers, the schools, have the best data available uh, in their hands. So we have recognized that if we want to do personalization for each student in the country, we cannot do that uh, in a sustainable way, solely relying on teachers. If we put that goal uh, to the teachers, it, it is simply uh, impossible for them. And uh, we've recognized that. So we have to use uh, technology. Uh, we have to leverage uh, that to personalize education. And um, uh, Private solutions, like I said, play a crucial role in creating this uh, future learning experience and saving uh, the teacher's time uh, that is really uh, strained at the, at the moment, and especially during uh, the emergency situation. Uh, 
we see an important role for the private companies to actually modelize, uh, modulize uh, these learning experiences and uh, for these materials to become more student uh, focused and assignment focused uh, in, to support independent learning. So uh, we cannot have, um, we cannot quadruple, for example, the, uh, the teacher population. Uh, but uh, we have to use technology uh, to provide the, the best data. Uh, so, to sum this up, the, the solutions must uh, work together. They must be interoperable, uh, like all the public services in Estonia already are. And the main challenges that we see uh, with this is um, we really need to make sure that the uh, public sector in Estonia, the educational, uh, the Ministry of Education, all of our partners understand what we're trying to do and make sure that personalized learning is at the very core, at the very center of all the politi pol political decision making uh, in, uh, in education. And um, we need a lot more of these different environments to provide the full ecosystem that we need and pull all the data uh, about the students together. We need to be really, really conscious about how we use this data because there are a lot of privacy concerns and we are very concerned uh, for them as well. Uh, we want to make sure that students feel safe uh, in the physical environment as well as the digital environment and uh, making sure that this data only um, gets into the hands of um, parties that really make sure that they have the best intentions for the student in mind is very important. Uh, so we need to create that supportive legal framework and we're working on that. Uh, and we really need to make sure that we uh, democratize uh, all of these uh, uh, processes that have to do with how the teachers and schools get their hands on uh, the different uh, learning tools. So we want to, want to make sure that they have the money, they have the financing to buy these uh, different uh, subscriptions, to buy these different uh, environments and um, in a streamlined way um, make uh, them available to uh, the students. And we uh, definitely need to work on uh, further developing our digital infrastructure, um, local networks and schools. Uh, for the schools that are ready, we need these uh, digital footprints, as we call them, uh, and one-on-one -on -one device use using computers uh, for every student is uh, a very um, crucial part of that. Uh, and um, what we saw again during uh, uh, the emergency situation was that high speed internet in rural areas became a problem, uh, especially with bigger families uh, that had a lower, uh, uh, smaller connection or uh, lower speed connection. Uh, and it is uh, another crucial part is con continuing to further these digital and actually even more importantly non-cognitive uh, competences in schools and teachers because uh, if they uh, understand uh, how they are supposed to uh, use this information that we're gathering for them, uh, how to make sure uh, that they o don't overstep social or emotional boundaries, uh, putting all of that together uh, requires a lot of training for the schools and uh, we, we need to make sure that they are ready. So to summarize, we actually hope that every country creates some sort of initiative uh, for creating a national personalized learning path infrastructure. Uh, we see this happening uh, in uh, Finland already. We see this happening in the Netherlands. Uh, I haven't heard of a similar uh, initiative in Norway. Uh, I might be mistaken and I, I simply don't have the information. But we really hope that everyone uh, goes for this uh, path because we need to work together to make sure that these tools that we create and these private companies create become uh, accessible for everyone. Uh, and uh, and uh, finally, the need for a streamlined international edtech marketplace. 
uh, for providing these solutions is also needed. And we cannot do this with a population of 1.3 million uh, in Estonia. We cannot simply do this. Uh, we're hoping to work together with a lot of different companies. Uh, that's all for me. Thank you. And if you want to uh, uh, see more about this, uh, go to educationnation.ee. Uh, we have more information on there as well. Thank you. So thank you so much for your fantastic presentation and all the hard work that you have been doing. We have received some questions already from the audience, so I would suggest to sit down for a second and to discuss about all these things. So uh, let's have a sit here. So um, the first question that we have received here is how did special education need students fare during distance learning period? Um, students with uh, special education needs uh, definitely need more uh, focused attention from unfortunately only uh, the parent can really, really uh, affect them uh, as we saw a lot of uh, different um, teachers struggling to even make contact. So uh, it was really important for uh, the teacher to work together with the student to make any sort of um, learning happening, le learning uh, happen. So it's um, it needs a lot more work than with uh, with the average student population, and uh, we're working on that as well. But do you think that in the future, like some of the students will actually like to be continuing learning remotely? Let's say they, they might get sick or like, um, they, they like to travel a lot because of their parents' work or something like this. Do you think it's possible that we're going to continue doing these things also in the future when the crisis are over? Well, we already have statistics that show that uh, a lot of students actually preferred uh, learning at home. Uh, of course, uh, that... Uh, that's changed uh, during the spring uh, time because they started missing their friends, of course. But a lot of students um, felt safe at home and felt uh, uh, very differently than they usually do uh, when, uh, when they're in schools. It depends on how well socialized they are. It depends on a lot of aspects uh, so that uh, if they felt better, safer at home, uh, conducting their learning, uh, we, we see this as an opportunity that personalized uh, learning and uh, the infrastructure that we're building uh, can create. Uh, a lot of students uh, have told me when, when we've been speaking about this, that uh, does this mean that we can go on trips with my parents and, and I can still uh, learn uh, when we're um, possibly away for a month or two? And that's, uh, that's a definite possibility. It's doable. Yeah. Uh, okay, but uh, but also a reminder for all of you, so you can ask also your own questions still uh, on Slido. So the number is eight, one, six and five. Uh, but the, um, the next question, which is also linked to the personalized learning that we were talking about here. So how are you planning to address privacy issues regarding personalized learning uh, infra uh, infrastructure? Uh, that's a Pandora's box that we're only now opening, uh, and we're, it really needs uh, a lot of work. As I said before, um, uh, the digital space is, is not very different from uh, our physical space. We need to make sure that uh, people feel safe and they trust uh, the system. Uh, they uh, have a way to check up on who checked up on them, and uh, make sure that uh, all of these activities are logged. So uh, that requires a lot of uh, cooperation with uh, private companies uh, and, uh, and uh, making sure that these um, different environments actually uh, help the mm -hmm. student. So the transparency is also the key here, right? Very much so, yes. Uh, but when do you think the infrastructure will be ready for that? Oh, that, that, that is more than uh, a million dollar question. Uh, I think it will never, never actually be ready. Uh, we don't see this as a project. We see this as, um, as uh, the new education system for the digital age. Uh, it might progress further than that in the future, but it is not simply a project. It is how we think education will happen in the future. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to make sure all the components work together for that. Yeah, I, I wish you good luck with that. And then definitely we will succeed from that. Um, the very last question that we still have one minute to go here that I would like to ask from you. We know that um, Estonian students are at the top of PISA results. What are the sacrifices for, uh, for being at the very top there? Um, 
I th not to uh, open another Pandora's box with, uh, with uh, regards to PISA results, uh, we are very proud, of course, that uh, Estonian students uh, do perform. Uh, but uh, we have to be honest with ourselves that uh, Estonian students are also um, having uh, a lot of trouble in schools with regards to mm -hmm. feeling, again, safe, uh, feeling uh, that they are open to learning, uh, all of that. So we need to make sure that um, uh, as we go ahead, our focus, our, our way of measuring success is not reliant on uh, PISA or any other uh, sort of international marker, but uh, we need to come up with uh, better ones. And I know PISA is actually working on this as well, mm -hmm. but we need to focus on the student as a person, as an identity, uh, first and foremost. But do you think that our uh, EdTech ICT companies might be able to help us here? Definitely. I hope uh, that companies come up with solutions and, and are already providing solutions that uh, are going to uh, help a lot, uh, especially with regards to um, to that safety and, and emotional questions. And Kadri will speak later on, uh, on how she uh, is providing a system for that. Okay, thank you for your answers. It was great discussing the, uh, these things with you. Uh, so right now we are moving over to the next presentation. So we're going to have Daniel Geras here with me. He is the CEO of eSchool uh, e System, uh, eGol, uh, which is the main school managing system that we use here in Estonia. So uh, Daniel, the stage is yours. Hello. Just imagine that teachers can concentrate on their main work. Um, imagine that uh, parents know everything that is going on in school and they know everything what is going on or what is happening with their kids in school. Uh, also imagine the good communication between home and school and also imagine that students don't have to skip the school year, school year due to the COVID situation. So this is our goal, uh, this is what we do here in Estonia and we provide a school management system for schools. My name is Tanel Geres, and I'm coming from a company called Egol, which means e-school in translation. So, already 2002, we started to think about the ways how to improve education in Estonia. And the main thing that we understood was that parents have to be involved in the learning process the same way as students are. So they have to know everything about the grades, homeworks and the lesson descriptions and so on and so on. And this is the main thing that we uh, need to make all the system uh, work. So already um, Ivor mentioned a bit about the PISA results and, and I must say that these are actually very impressive results for a small country like Estonia. So we are definitely very uh, proud of it. And uh, as we have a very good cooperation with the city of Tallinn, we also went and asked what they think about our product. And uh, among other things, um, they also said that uh, we have also made contribution to uh, these good results in PISA. Also other things, but this one as well. So the way we have achieved this uh, um, is by connecting all the relevant parties into one system. So students, parents, teachers, and uh, local authorities, also school management, and the information that is stored in the system is are the grades, homeworks, lesson descriptions, also secure messaging and so on and so on. And um, it is worth to mention here that uh, the, the security is also very important for us. So all the security is also uh, done or managed by the, by, by the roles so that everyone uh, can see only the information that is meant for them. So you can't see any information that is not meant for, for you. And here are the most important things that we are most proud of. So teachers have cut their administrative time in half, saving up to 45 minutes per day. 
And this is something that teachers have, sem uh, have said themselves. And you might ask that how it's possible. Well, the thing is that the information that they do, they do it only once. The info they are inserting into the system, they do it only once. And all the reports are generated automatically. So they don't have to spend any time on administrative time, like creating reports, presenting them to, to school management, and so on and so on. And they can concentrate on their main work, which is teaching. Another important thing is the um, reduced um, rate of skipping. Uh, and we have uh, counted that it's about 30% in five years. But if we take like 15 or 18 years, I would say that the rate is even uh, 90, 95%. Because parents know everything what is going on in school and they can interact quickly. And also it supports the early uh, noticing uh, of uh, problems so they won't escalate. And as parents are involved in the learning process, um, they check the homeworks and grades and all this information on a daily basis. So me, myself, my two daughters are in school and I know everything what is happening to them, what are the grades, what are the homeworks and I can support However, I can, it's made easy for me. Um, and our technology has never stopped evolving. So even now, after 18 years, uh, we are still improving our product and finding ways how to um, do it better and how to securely uh, be available 24-7 um, for all our, our users. And. Um, as I already mentioned, this once-only principle, what we are following here in Estonia and also in our system, that uh, people are um, adding info only once. It prevents the duplicate data and also it cuts their administrative time. And it also allows different integrations to, to various systems. So in Estonia, we have counted about 11 different uh, integrations uh, with our product. And as it has become an um, irreplaceable uh, tool here in Estonia for schools, um, then, uh, then uh, our success has also moved us abroad. And we have various pilots all over the world, uh, in African region and also in Japan. So also we are providing our services for Russia, uh, Latvia, and Kazakhstan. So the product itself can be a standalone system or it also can be customized for a country's uh, needs. So it's definitely open for, for schools all over the world to use. And um, here I have, I have here some, some screenshots. So what the parent and student can see from our system is that you can see the homeworks, uh, you can see uh, absences, you can see all the uh, grades, notifications and things like that. And uh, also, um, as everything is in one platform, you don't need any additional um, platforms for that. Uh, for example, if student is ill at home, it's very easy for parent to send the absence note to school. There are no email lists or, or some messaging groups needed because uh, all the data is, uh, is, is there and, and information is available. So for teachers, uh, the view is uh, like this. So you can see your students, you can see your journals and do everything what you need to do there. We also have a secure messaging platform built in. So as I mentioned, you don't have to create the WhatsApp groups or, uh, or, or any other messaging groups, basically, or, or email lists, because they are generated automatically based on the roles in the system. So our core features are, yes, available in web and also in the mobile. And uh, we believe that it's definitely an uh, irreplaceable tool for schools just to manage all the things that are happening in school. So exciting times ahead. Please join our journey and 
that's all from my side. I hope you have some good questions and I would like to answer them right away. Thank you. So thank you, Danielle. And of course, we already have some good questions for you. So I would That's again cool. ask you to sit down here for a second. Uh, so once again, we, before we start with the questions, then uh, please ask uh, more questions. So again, using Slido 8, 1, 6 and 5. But the first question that I have for you, did you notice any remarkable changes turning the time of the crisis in users of the eSchool platform? Yeah, as a, matter of, as a matter of fact, we did. And uh, what we saw is that um, uh, the usage of the functions of AIRGOL, it changed completely. Um, schools and teachers found out uh, the features that okay, were there before as well, but they were not using it before. So the usage changed completely. We saw that the communication had a very high rise and also sharing materials and then files and these things. It was not so popular before, but uh, during uh, this COVID period, it had, uh, uh, let's say, the usage grow a lot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, the next question here, where are you piloting your solutions these days? Yeah, uh, we are having a pilot also in, in um, African region, in different countries. I believe it was like uh, five countries there. And also we have started our pilot uh, project in Japan as well. So different countries, different regions, so we see that it is usable everywhere. Mm -hmm. And as I told, it can be customized as well. So it can be, yeah, what are, what are the needs? It can be done. And of course, the need has been increasing a lot now when everyone are actually learning remotely. Uh, but uh, we also have time for a third question. So the uh, third question that I have for you is that how long does it take to implement a goal uh, in a school or country and what are the preconditions for that? Mm -hmm. So the precondition, uh, I will start from that. Uh, basically, there, are, there has to be a will there has to be a wish to, to do it and also some uh, general uh, infrastructure in place as well. So internet connections and, and also some computers in school as well. Uh, but um, how long would it take to set up a school to make the trainings to everyone to get going? It takes about a couple of days. But for a countryside, it also, if there are some customizations needed. It is a very good idea to have a short pilot for a, for a month or so to find out what are the needs, additional needs, and then make adjustments and then go with a larger scale. But in general, onboarding a school, it doesn't take a lot of time. Okay, so that was the last question from my side now. Uh, we would all like to say thank you for Tunnel to giving up this wonderful system that has made learning much easier for us. It was when I used to go to uh, high school, I was using this system. So uh, thank you for all the great work. We have now the very last presentation. So we are going to ha uh, listen to Kadri Duisk, who is the founder and CEO of Clanbeat. Uh, so you're going to hear about her solution now as well. Hi, I'm Kadri Duisk, founder and CEO of Clanbeat. And we are building a personalized learning solution for schools, helping them with two major challenges in education right now, student growth and well-being. And uh, if we are thinking of the COVID time, then uh, this is a perfect example because we grew out, out of those pains which came during the COVID. And uh, the main challenge is not only in Estonia, but all around the world, were that students tended to get overwhelmed by all the new technology, by all the new learning methods. And, uh, and if you're thinking of the pains where what schools went through, then uh, I think the biggest change for students was their change in rhythm of pace, of their habits. And if they had to go uh, straight from school into the home learning, then they had to design their own days, which were meaningful for them. And, uh, and if you have been going through the same rhythm every day, day by day, and have to suddenly manage your own, your own learning and, uh, and to be self-directed in it, it caused some challenges. 
some students scored uh, much more better, some didn't. Uh, and uh, I think this is a really big learning curve for all of the countries in the world. And um, it resulted in some kids being lost, meaning that it was really hard to get them into the uh, screen every day and really to get in contact with them. And, um, but it all got better uh, when you started using methods which uh, started being very humane and personalized. And uh, this is uh, why I'm really proud to present what we have today, because this is something which we have been working together uh, out of those pains and to accelerate the growth of many countries which are having personalized learning, uh, self-directed learning and uh, student motivation at the core of their processes. But before I go into that, I really want to tell you a story. And uh, this here is my own daughter. She's Tiffany, she's 15 years old and uh, she looks like a model kid. She has straight days, uh, she's playing saxophone, is part of the national volleyball team and, and uh, is really avid advocate of uh, world issues of global warming and uh, too much plastic and etc. Uh, but what lies underneath and what came out really vividly during the COVID period is that she feels overwhelmed. She feels that she's struggling with time management. She feels stuck. Uh, and uh, all the expectations which uh, are put to our children from the society, from the schools, from the teachers, from the parents, ourselves, from Instagram, for all the social media where they are following, it's enormous. The amount of information which is coming to students is enormous and, uh, and they are trying to benchmark themselves against them. And uh, this creates a great stress. If we see the academic results in kids in the world going up and up, then the uh, stress levels are going also up. And this is something I do not want to stand by and just look at happening. Uh, we have created a solution to really support students being humans, not just uh, learning uh, machines. And, uh, and if you are looking at the, all the great PISA results we have achieved, then uh, being a human besides that, in my opinion, is much more important. And uh, let's look into how we are achieving that. And, uh, but before that, I really want to tell how we are addressing these uh, issues uh, in a way that uh, we have done it in co-creation with schools, with educational psychology scientists, and what's most important, with the students. If you're looking at all the solutions in the schools right now, then they are school administration focused and, uh, and uh, teacher focused. We really want to put the student in the center of the learning. So they would be able to build up their learning based on their internal motivation. And uh, we are supporting students in uh, taking a really active role in the learning. And if you're talking about distance learning, uh, uh, home learning, then students have to be masters in their own learning. They have to understand how they learn the best uh, and uh, understand themselves better. And during uh, this uh, learning experience, experience where the student is in the center of it, uh, we are taking them through continuous improvement model of planning, acting and also reflecting because understanding yourself and your learning better this is where all the difference comes in and uh, we have created a tool to support student agency and uh, in the core of it for students it looks like daily e-planner where they are putting down their learning uh, their homework their hobbies uh, everything which is consisting their life, meaning that uh, they are not taking learning only in isolation. They are also looking uh, a wider perspective of their life. And uh, besides putting down what they have to do, they are also putting down how they're feeling, how hard it is for them, and having the community to get them unstuck. So if you're looking at the screens in here, then there is this small ask a question button which directs them into the community of other students. So we really believe that students themselves are much more smarter than adults and uh, we really want to give them collaboration skills to get themselves unstuck. And if we are um, talking about this planning, this gives a really powerful uh, way to support personalized learning and students taking autonomy over their learning because they are writing things down on their own. They are not taking tasks from school, but they are writing those things down for themselves and this uh, gives them bigger motivation and autonomy of uh, getting things done. Second part and which is really, really important and we cannot look uh, in separation is uh, student well-being and uh, we really want to support learning and life balance. 
And for that, we are uh, supporting students reflecting uh, on their tasks, uh, on what is happening in their days, and sharing these reflections also with the homeroom teacher or with school advisory or anybody from the school who is uh, there to support students because uh, teachers are being upgraded a lot into um, coaches, into co-facilitators, into co-creators of education. So, so to support this upgrade of uh, teachers, we have made uh, it possible for them to really connect with students and really understand what is going on in their lives. And uh, uh, having this kind of personal touch to each student, I think it's vital for making personalized learning happen. And uh, students are social beings, as we all are, and, uh, and we really help them to um, have this uh, safe and personal space where they can uh, ask questions, connect during uh, uh, looking at their future and uh, what they want to achieve in life and peg their learning around those things which they want to achieve in life uh, or what is inspiring for them. So they wouldn't look learning just something which comes to them from the school or the government or the parents, but something which they want to do and uh, they would have goals which are inspiring for them. And in Glanbit, you can actually design your learning according to those things. And uh, really important is data. And uh, we are reflecting the data back to students, parents, and also uh, uh, teachers, and giving teachers very powerful tools to do personalized interventions and really support those students in the places where they need the support the most. So. Uh, teachers are having personalized dashboards, uh, which gives them the possibility to support each student individually. Uh, security is also important. We are putting lots of emphasis on being GDPR compliant and uh, students are actually the owner of their own data and have the controls of what do they want to share and what do they wa do not want to share. And it is our dream and goal that the change in the world would be embraced with grace and each student would have very strong personal and self-management skills to make this happen and uh, not to be directed by uh, the learning which schools uh, are putting in front of them, but really building up the education based on their internal motivation. Thank you. Godri, it's always a pleasure listening to your presentations. But our audience is also curious about some questions, so let's uh, have a sit Thank here you. for a second and, and discuss about some other things here too. So the very first question that we have for Godri, um, does Glanbeat help also fight bullying in schools and how? Oh yes. Uh, if you're thinking where the bullying comes from, then bullying comes from uh, lack of self-confidence in yourself and not understanding yourself. And, uh, and uh, with Glanbeat, tool we are helping to solve those internal issues in the bullies uh, who are actually being out there and bullying. Uh, al although we are also have uh, the possibilities of making everybody's differences visible. Mm -hmm. So uh, the bullying comes from not knowing your peers and not understanding and not being emotionally um, back to their problems as well. So, but if you understand and have the wider perspective of everybody, then uh, the bullying uh, is decreasing and uh, and besides that we have also anti-bullying reporting and uh, monitoring but this is only technical but, but i think the biggest change is the raising of awareness uh, which de decreases the bullying in the schools this is definitely needed um another question so uh what do you consider to be the greatest challenge uh, nowadays uh, for the geeks on the social side on the social side i think uh, if we're talk talking about uh, social media and, uh, and social emotional skills, then uh, if you're looking at the future, then the social emotional skills are becoming more and more important. How do you communicate with peers? How do you get out of your shell, which seems really, really uh, convenient? And, uh, and it sometimes might seem that it's out of your comfort zone, uh, but I think uh, the future lies in those uh, people who are able to make meaningful connections with each other and who are also able to be vulnerable in a way that mm. uh, they are able to make those connections happen. So I think this is the key. 
Thank you, Gadri, for, for also your answers. So it um, seems that it's a wrap for today. Uh, I hope the discussion was interesting for you as well. And I believe that Estonia and Norway especially also have so many experiences and lessons to share to each other. And I would encourage all of you to continue working together with our wonderful edtech companies because they can help us to take these educational policies to the next level and change and, and shape the, um, the landscape for the future. So um, this recording will be also available online and the entire event was organized by Invest Estonia. So you can also watch us a little bit later if you didn't have time to uh, watch the entire uh, recording today here. So for my side, uh, once again, thank you for listening and I wish you a very pleasant uh, day.